We're going to be talking about Ben Hogan's first book, Power Golf. I've got two copies here because I want, want to compare even the insides of these two. I've got the original 1948 printing. I don't have a cover for it. And then I have the one you're most likely to find in the stores, which is the paperback. Uh, they're the same information in the book, but there's one huge difference between the two. And that's on the inside. Let me show you a fun page on this one. This one is full of excellent pictures of Ben Hogan. Uh, it's a glossy book. And the pictures on the inside are excellent. If you look at though the paperback, instead of actually pictures, you get these line drawings, which are not nearly as nice or informational as the uh, actual glossy photographs. Other than that, the information in both books is exactly the same, but if you have the chance to get the 1948 book, uh, this is the 11th printing, so there are a lot out there, but they can be a little hard to find. If you have a chance to get the original glossy version, get that one, and uh, the pictures are just so much nicer in there. So, now to the book Power Golf by Ben Hogan. Uh, Again, this was published in 1948. This is pre-accident, uh, pre him reworking his swing. Uh, remember, he rebuilt his golf swing from scratch. So a lot of the pictures in here don't line up with the Ben Hogan that you're used to seeing in his later golf swing. But there also is a lot of very good information in here about his golf swing. Uh, let's look at the table of contents. Now, some similarities, but the main thing that will jump out is this section four on the full swing. Uh, this is basically uh, his entire book, Five Lessons, is this one chapter on the is about the full swing. And here he only dedicates about 20 pages to the full swing. Uh, everything else is about uh, hutting, uh, bunker shots, uh, stormy weather, uh, Hour, a lot of things you may or may not be interested in, but uh, there are a couple of cha chapters here, particularly the one on his stance uh, and on his grip that he'll give you that really jump out with some great information that carries over, no matter which version of the Hogan swing uh, you're interested in. I'm going to skip over the introduction here and just jump right into the grip. Now, he has this pattern that he has in here. We'll have a few pages of information. Actually, he writes more about the grip text than anything else. But then he uses this pattern where it starts showing uh, sequences of pictures with a short description of, below it. And that's his description. So on the grip, instead of just having a bunch of text, he has some sequential pictures with some short text by it. Uh, this format's very easy to read. It's a very good format for a golf book. As you can see, he goes through everything little by little, but you see how much nicer or clearer the information is here with the pictures as opposed to looking at the same information with the line drawings. Club selection, uh, that's a little out of date, uh, probably about 70 years out of date. Uh, the only really interesting thing here is where he talks about his clubs and distances. Uh, for example, the driver, he expects to regularly get 265 or 265 yards out of it, a max of 300. He talks about using a brassy. Uh, so the distances are definitely different than what you would be looking at today uh, with modern clubs, but that's a nice little... Uh, window into the past with the distances they played in the past. Uh, the stance section. This is actually a very good section. Uh, this applies to anybody today. Even if you discard the rest of the information that's being pre-Hogan change, uh, the stance section I think is worth it just to get this, read this book. And that would be in the hardback or the 
paperback. You'll find the paperback a lot cheaper. Uh, particularly if you're looking to use, you can usually find it for a couple of dollars uh, in a used section. Uh, it's almost impossible to get the uh, hardback. Not impossible, but uh, impossible without paying, you know, $20 or $30. Book is hardback is definitely uh, at a premium. But uh, what I like about the stamp section, uh, again, he gives you these different ones, but the one I'd really like to point out is this, this page here on pages 28 and 29. A lot of people miss this point about your golf stands. You notice he's got, uh, he's going from the short club to the medium clubs and then to the driver, the long clubs. You notice his stance angle doesn't change here. What happens is the clubs, they just get longer as they go out, but your stance angle and even where your hands are at doesn't change that much. Your hands come with the shorter clubs, your hands come in closer to your body. And the club is closer to your feet, but you're not, you don't bend over more. Uh, the longer clubs, you don't stand up straighter. Your hands just reach out a little farther from your body. And the club is a little longer. This is a point a lot of people miss with clubs. Uh, they're standing up. A lot of people think if you've got a shorter club, you're supposed to be bent over more. And if you've got a longer club, you're supposed to, uh, Stand up straighter. That's not what you're supposed to do. You should always have the same posture for all of your clubs. You should adjust your clubs how far away they from are from you, depending on their length. Uh, like I said, a lot of good information in the stance. Uh, this particular pic picture on 31, uh, he would not do this drill with his new uh, newer stance. So this is some arm information that. Uh, you let go of, but I've, I see a lot of people teaching this particular drill even today. Or, or I should say teaching it today, so it's still valid for a lot of people, depending on how you hold your arms. Hogan changed his arm, the way he held his arms. Uh, so this would not be valid for the new Hogan swing, but it would be for his old swing and for just most people's uh, golf swing. Okay, now he gets into the full swing, but he spends a whole page and a half of text on the back swing and two and a half pages of text on the down swing. But the information that you're getting here is really in the sequential pictures with the descriptions under them, where he's describing what he's doing. Now, if you're a Hogan fan, uh, the pictures really tell a great story or give you some great information, uh, particularly this one on page 43, this is the top of his backswing. And notice how different that looks from his post-accident or remade swing. Uh, his lead arm is kind of soft with a bend in it here. Uh, the club is really pulled around. It's not level with the ground. Uh, it's way down, and his shoulders are really fully turned. Uh, Hogan, after he re rebuilt his swing, would probably call this overswinging. Uh, so he gets he, but in his old swing, he really got turned around. That's that's one of the major differences between his old swing and his new swing. But uh, the line drawing doesn't do this picture justice. Uh, but if you look at it here, you can see how how different his old and new swing were. But again, he's following the same pattern of showing the sequential pictures and giving you a little description below it so you understand what's going on. Uh, turning on the power chapter, uh, honestly, the only thing I can say I got was practice hitting hard. Uh, he doesn't really give me any tips on how to hit hard, just practice hitting hard. Uh, so I don't. <laughs> didn't really get a lot out of that, but again, he's got a s swing sequence in here. If you want to see his old swing sequence, and like I said the pictures in here are great. There are not a lot of good old pictures of Ben Hogan. Uh, if you're a Hogan fan or just like to study up on, on golf trivia, the pictures here by themselves are some great, uh, great pictures of Ben Hogan in his swing. 
And like I said, this is the pre-made or pre-changed swing, pre-accident swing. Look how many spikes are on that shoe. He's got nine spikes on the front shoe, four on the back. He's got 13, those big metal spikes on his shoe. I'd always heard that he added spikes to his shoes. I mean, I don't know how many they had back then, but that's just a huge number. <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to flip through these. Uh, then he starts talking about iron shots. Um, you know, so this is where he gets away from the full swing. You know, and again, this he doesn't have that much really information on the full swing. Uh, has a couple of pages on how to hit iron shots. Has some information on pitch and chip shots. Uh, some text. But again, what's really valuable here or all the pictures he has of him chipping and the information beside it. Little pointers. Uh, some really nice pictures of him chipping. Uh, this is his iron stance. Uh, he says it's a little bit more open. And this is an iron swing shot. From the front. Follow through. Nice vertical follow through. Notice he's not doing a re reverse C, which he never did. Uh, here's the same iron shot from the back. Now this picture on 107. Um, you notice how close that is to his uh, traditional full swing, even with the driver uh, in his rebuilt swing. So you can see that some of his new swing was still there in the old swing. He just uh, had pulled it out. See the lead arm is level with his shoulders. Uh, it's a very flat swing. Uh, the club is not pulled around like it was you saw in the driver's swing. Uh, which he later went to with the drivers also. This swing later became, or this position, if you compare it to the uh, Time Magazine cover, you'll see they're very similar. The famous Time Magazine cover that showed him in this golf position. Uh, I said this is pre-accident, pre-makeover, but you can see the roots of this new swing here. Here's another sequence of him hitting the irons from the front. Just go through all of these. And finally, he does a chapter on putting. Uh, he was never known as a great putter, but uh, he does have some putting information in here. Uh, he shows you his putting grip. It's worth, and then some sequence and pictures of him putting. Uh, Finally, a little information about buck bunker shots with some uh, nice pictures of him hitting out of a bunker. And then uh, uphill and downhill shots. Not a lot of information here, but. Uh, it does let you know how you approach them. And then uh, plain and stormy weather, and then uh, an epilogue. Uh, but overall, this is a good book. Uh, like I said, the stance chapter, I think, is one of the best for any golf book. So it may be worth it just to get that. But like you can also, like you said, you can get the information from the in more inexpensive uh, paperback. You don't have to buy the hardback, but hardback, um, if you're a Ben Hogan fan, it has some, you know, wonderful pictures of Ben Hogan in there. Um, you know, there are not that many really good ones of him around, even though there seem like there are a lot. Uh, this has got some of the best uh, for his swing, his early swing.
So that's Power Golf by Ben Hogan. Both hardback and paperback.